Before we start, yes, Kenna Roth is back at it again. Honestly, the only reason why I'm wearing this wig is because all my other ones are dirty and have glue on them. So I thought I'd switch it up. Hello, by the way, though. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But the last time we talked about a bad movie, it nearly caused an aneurysm because it pissed me off. So instead this week we're doing good movies in a glam, a movie that I like, ooh, ooh, a movie that I like, ooh, but before we get started, as always, let's send it over to Ad Roll Kenny, who can secure us a bag. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is Ad Roll Kenny, and today's video is in partnership with Dossier. So Dossier reproduces classic high-end scents at a fraction of the luxury price by getting rid of like the brand tax or like retail markups while keeping the same great quality. Basically their philosophy is like, oh, everyone should be able to have access to luxury quality things, but it shouldn't cost an arm and a leg and they shouldn't have to compromise quality. By removing retail markups, you can get the most iconic scents from like Chanel, Tom Ford, Dior. You can get them for like 29 to $59. They offer free return and exchange changes. So feel free to try out a full size bottle for 30 days. And if you don't like it, you can send it back full refund, baby. They also do bulk deals. So if you want to try out multiple scents, if you buy three plus bottles, you can get it for 20% off and free shipping. I got four scents and some of these are like really bangers. First off, we have floral pink pepper, which has notes of bergamot, lychee, orange, rose, jasmine, pink pepper, patchouli, blonde wood, and vanilla. Um, and this is inspired by Dior, Miss Dior Sherry 2017 version. Oh, it smells like a really grown and sexy sweet tart. It's not coinly sweet. I don't tend to like scents that are kind of like middle school body spray type vibes. This is that elevated, you know? That smells so good. Next up, we have Woody Freesia, which has notes of freesia, blackcurrant, strawberry, rose, jasmine, peach, patchouli, vanilla, blonde wood, and musk. And this is inspired by Armani C. Eau de Parfum. Fruity walking through a, through a forest, picking strawberries vibe. Again, nothing too coyingly sweet. Woody Ginger. Okay, this one is the first that feels like it's a bit more unisex. This might actually be a cologne. Uh, this is based off of Tom Ford's Tom Ford for men, Eau de Toilet. I don't mind that. I don't care if it's something is supposed to be for a man. If it smells good, it smells good. This I think could definitely lean quite unisex. This has notes of ginger, lemon, bergamot, pepper, orange blossom, violet leaves, cypriol, Patchouli, amber, cedarwood, and tobacco. Personally, wouldn't wear this by itself. I would mix it with something because it has those like smoky notes. I think it would be very interesting to try it with perhaps floral pink pepper. If I went up to a man and he smelled like this, I'd be down. And then last but not least, we have aromatic ginger, which has notes of ginger, grapefruit, marine notes, clary, sage, rosemary, geranium, amber wood. And it's supposed to be reminiscent of Louis Vuitton, Lemon City. All the puffer. I would also argue could could lean uh, unisex. Admittedly, this one isn't my favorite. It's giving um, by the campfire. But with that said, those notes I think could work really well with something else. So, but definitely not something I would want to wear by itself. It's great that I got to try it. And if I don't like it, I can send it back. So if you would like to try out Dossier and get some luxury for a fraction of the price, you can click on the link down below. Big thanks again to Dossier for partnering with me for this video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. So the last time we were here, we were watching Say Yes, the movie that actively tried to gaslight me in every way possible. It is the story of a woman dying of cancer who decides to coerce her husband into a sexual relationship with her brother upon her death. And it's just as bad as it sounds. They try to convince us, the viewers, that it's just a quirky little love story with unconventional setup, but all the same, completely non-coercive at all. And I hated every moment of it and a few notes on that. One, people were telling me that Kindle that is not a language that may possibly be like twin speak. Apparently there was a one-off line that nobody pays attention to because it's like a one-off line about how they made their own uh, language. I still stand by how that was stupid and unnecessary. You still should have translated the twin speak if you gonna put it in the damn movie. B. Bo started speaking it. I guess showing that him and his wife are just as close as her and her brother. Still stupid. Also, 
even stupider. It has come to my attention <laughs> that that the maker of Say Yes is making a sequel to it and it's coming out this month if I'm not mistaken. I did not know that prior to making the video and I will watch it because I hate myself. This movie will be uh, the dead wife left eggs for them to try to have a baby. Anyway, if you want to check out my video on it, you can check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. I will say whenever I get particularly heated about a video or about a movie, I get the best comments they're always hilarious someone said uh something along the lines of like whenever kendall start talking like angry spongebob that's when you know the video <laughs> gone hit but this week i was like nah i need a respite i need good because like i'm losing my mind so this week we're talking about pearl which is one of my favorite movies that were released last year along with the menu i've done a video on the menu originally i was gonna do pearl during valentine's month so february and the joke that i said all wrong that time was like who else is a bitch that loves and believes in herself more than Pearl. But uh, it got pushed back until today because too much bullshit was getting my attention along the way. But rest assured, now we're finally talking about Pearl because I love this movie. And though that is a dark joke, I'm not particularly wrong. I mean, in fairness, this movie is about all kinds of love. Parental. Ah, yeah! oh! Friendly. Ah! Romantic. Oh it has it all. And though it is no longer Valentine's month, I feel like every once in a while we need a reminder of what love can possibly do for us. It's another movie starring Mia Goth. Uh, I, I talked about Infinity Pool a few weeks ago as well. That movie's a f***ing trip. Uh, we don't have time, <laughs> but <laughs> that video will also be linked down below. This movie is actually a sequel to another movie that came out also in 2022, which is incredibly impressive. They were able to pop out two movies, like a series that quickly. And apparently they're releasing the third movie uh, this year or in a few months or something. So I'm really excited to see that. But this is the second movie. Some would probably say I should talk about the first movie first. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I don't like it as much and it's not necessary. Pearl is the sequel to a movie called X, which again came out early last year. X is a story of some adult film stars in the 70s going to like a farm in order to secretly film one of their movies. And not to spoil too much, but they end up biting off more than they can chew when they meet the old elderly couple there, particularly the wife. Pearl. It's okay. I prefer Pearl. Its pacing is really good and it's just overall a lot tighter of a film to me. Um, but X isn't bad. And Pearl came out just a few months after that movie came out. It's a origin story of Pearl and how she ended up being Pearl. Hence why you don't really need to see X to watch Pearl, but I could see Pearl making you like X more. I've heard a lot of people say that, like something about the retrospective of seeing how Pearl became who she was actually makes you like X more. But again, you can watch them completely independent of each other and it won't dampen the experience at all. So if you haven't checked it out, either one, I would highly recommend it. But yes, like I've said in my Infinity Pool video, I am slowly but surely becoming a bit of a Mia Goth fangirl. And even if I don't enjoy whatever movie I watch her in, I do find that I find it interesting and weird and intriguing. And that is saying more than a lot of people I see these days, so. But she plays Pearl, a young Pearl in the 1918 influenza outbreak. And she lives at home with her father and her mother while her husband, Howard, is fighting in World War One. Pearl greatly resents her life at the farm. Her mother is very hard on her, discourages her, guilt trips her into devoting everything to the farm and her family. Take care of your father who's been horribly paralyzed from his own bout of influenza. Be realistic. But the thing is, Pearl has wishes dreams, aspirations, to be a dancer in the pictures, but finds that this farm is keeping her from following her dreams. But it becomes soon apparent that everything isn't all good with Pearl. Pearl's pained. Pearl, Pearl is uh, troubled deeply, which is a frightening truth that becomes more and more apparent as Pearl becomes increasingly desperate to become the person of her dreams. And again, if I haven't said it enough, I love this movie. It's so good. Mia Goth is incredible and she be making them noises again. The movie has this very like unsettling 
Technicolor retro vibe while being the story of someone falling deeper and deeper into derangement. I don't know. I, I'm a fan of mixing like whimsy with horror. And I think this movie kind of does that. Maybe that's why I like this movie. It's giving Sweeney Todd. No, 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 lied at all. No, I never lied. Said she took the poison. She did never said that she died. Poor thing. She lived, but it left a week in the head. All she did for months was just lie there in bed. Should have been in hospital, wound up in bed, and I'm instead, poor thing. Better you should think that she died. Yes, I lied, cause I love you. I be twice the wife she was. I love you. How could that thing have cared for you like me? Mrs. Lovett, what a charming notion. Pearl, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I love a whimsical horror movie and this movie is definitely that. It has that very like old timey, early Paramount, early MGM type feel to it, but mix that with just an incredibly disturbing <laughs> horror movie. And I love it. Not to worry, not to worry. I may not be smart, but I ain't dumb. But the movie certainly dips his toes into several different genres and it does so very well. There is a family drama element. There's a psychological thriller element and it's done in a combination that I think is done very well and very seamlessly. Um, it doesn't feel clunky and it doesn't feel like any component to that feels ill-placed. This might be my unmedicated ADHD talking, but I think it's the perfect length. Oh, that's another thing. Last week people were like, I see the Adderall shortage is hitting you too, sis. And I'm like, no, babe, I've never gotten medicated for my ADHD. Raw dogging it this entire time because we have to handle my anxiety first. <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect length. I think the pacing is amazing. It would build tension without dragging itself out. So if you haven't seen it yet and you're considering watching it, I'd definitely give it a watch. So without further ado, Let's get into Pearl 2022. So the film begins with a big band orchestra playing and it has that sort of old MGM font outside of a farmhouse. And everything about the film is letting you know that we're looking at something like a film about a film, if that makes sense. Everything is very retro and idealized. It seems like someone's gonna break out in song at any moment and sings like the Wizard of Oz or something, even though this is before that. Then we see Pearl. Pearl is a young woman who lives in a fantasy uh, where she is the focal point. She is the main character. Prima ballerina only to be disrupted and distracted by her mother who's forcing her down to bleak reality. Uh, I think it would be fair to say that her mother is a stern woman. She has a very like no nonsense, no lollygagging, uh, aura about her. She is a German immigrant who seems to have kind of resigned to the idea that she has to work hard for her family and thus expects Pearl to selflessly do the same. Thus, when she sees Pearl kind of prancing around and lollygagging, she's not at all amused by it. It's like, you don't have time to do this. You need to feed the animals. You need to do your farm work. What is this foolishness that you're devoting your time to instead of helping the family. So Pearl goes out to the farm and starts her duties, which is feeding the animals. She goes up to the cow feeding it and then says basically that there's gonna be a day that they'll never see her again because quote, she's special. One day the whole world's gonna know my name. Y'all see me for who I really am, a star. And starting here, we see that the movie does start off very much so in an almost wholesome way. Yeah, you're gonna make it after all type of way. There is something very empathetic about the story of a young person, particularly a woman who's thirsting for a life outside of the rigid confines of, of reality, a reality that she did not choose for herself, which is by all means, again, a very empathetic thought process, especially for this particular time period. It would seem that the movie is very aware that it needs to warn you that that is not the movie you're watching. Even though you knew that because you came in, presumably after watching X, you know you're gonna watch something dark, <laughs> but it just had to make sure you knew. So uh, right after we get this set up, nothing inherently terrible or nothing jarring at all. We have to give you immediate animal death. <laughs> because you just need to know that one, no animal ever survives a horror movie. And two, you need to know that that's what you're working into. So she sees a goose that walks into the barn. Apparently it's not one of theirs. So she immediately uh, stabs it with a pitchfork and takes it to their, I guess, pet alligator. Take it. 
that's the opening scene of Pearl. So back at home that night, her mother chastises her for her selfishness. All this foolishness she does is distracting again from the duties of the farm. And it's very important that she devotes fully because they don't have farm hands, presumably because of influenza. Like they're, they're losing people left, right, and center. You need to focus on the farm and on the family. Later, Pearl receives a letter from her husband, Howard, who is off at war, World War I. And he writes her letters periodically to say how she's still on his mind. And Pearl is constantly waiting for him to come back home. She bathes her father that night, giving him his medicine, which apparently is morphine. They were letting you get over the counter morphine back then. That's crazy. Is that real? I'm sure it is. That sounds like some kooky shit that would happen in the early 20th century. So I'm sure they were letting you just get over the counter morphine at the time. But uh, yeah, she's like, oh, you're running out of your medicine. I'll have to go back into the city to get you some. While she's there, she's gonna stop by the pictures, something that she's gonna keep a secret from mama. And so she does just that. She takes her bike into town and goes to get his medication as well as stop by the pictures. There she watches movies, drinks some of his morphine. <laughs> but she sits there watching the dancers on screen and is completely mystified by them. Outside of the picture, she meets a man who is smoking in the alleyway. He offers her a cigarette, calls her pretty, and says that, hey, he can get her into the second show for free, as he is the projectionist. But she rejects his offer, saying that she must get back to the farm for mama. But before she can go, he gives her a clip of the film that she just watched. If you come back, knock on this door. I'm always here and well, I can run the pictures as much as I like. On her way back, she loses the clip of the film in the wind. She goes to look for it and then falls upon a scarecrow. Now, things get a little weird. Uh, it's Mia Goff in a horror movie. You should expect that. I'm just like mentally preparing you for that. So uh, she starts dancing with the scarecrow, putting on its hat, which has undoubtedly all types of critters in it. And I gotta say one of the most like ironic parts of her like sheer deluded devotion to wanting to become a dancer is that she's not very good at it. <laughs> she's really not give up her day job. Then in the throes of passion of her imagination, she begins to then make out with said scarecrow. Again, Mia Goth horror film, don't be looking at me surprised. But yeah, she starts making out with the scarecrow with tongue, it's it's truly foul. Crow boo-boo and dirt in a pandemic, no less. While kissing the scarecrow, she imagines the projectionist on the scarecrow's body, his face on its body, and that was funny. And then screams in a way that again, only Mia Goth can. I'm married! She then proceeds to ride the scarecrow or like a rodeo. City girl's up. Uh, she gonna be a rug burn make her lips fall off. But she comes back to the farm late, something that her mother notices. And she's like, where have you been? Also, where did you get that hideous hat from? And she was like, I found it. She was like, that's disgusting. It's dirty and probably full of lights. Go change your father. After tending to her father, she considers if he is still in there, if he still occupies his body. She tinkers with the idea of choking him to death. Just cash. Over dinner, her mother is like, where is the rest of the money I gave you to go into the city? Pearl says that she used what was left to get some hard candy for the long trail back. Her mom then takes her food from her and says, well, since you had candy, that will be your dinner. Uh, not the food that I worked all day by myself to prepare because you weren't here. Girl, that bike ride was like 18 miles. Be for real, bitch. She's like, we don't have money to waste on stupid stuff. You see the way this country treats German farmers and the only way we're not gonna die of famine is if we work together and we have to be careful with how we conduct our lives. The next morning, Pearl's sister-in-law, Mitzi, and her mother come over to visit the family. They come offering a whole roasted pig, a gift of good tithings to the family, an offering that Pearl's mother swiftly denies saying that it's basically charity and they will never accept charity. It would seem that Howard's family seems to come from some money, some comfort. Mitzi comes fancily dressed with a whole dead fox on her shoulder. And she just has this general kind of carefree presence about her. And she goes up to Pearl and she says that they are having an audition at the church for a chorus line to bring merriment across the state for the holidays. And they're looking for dancers and they're gonna be doing auditions. So Mitzi suggests that they both go and audition and it'll be their little secret. So later Pearl steals a dress from her mother, 
takes that nasty top hat and rides into town to visit the projectionist. She tells him about the audition and admits that she is nervous because she hasn't performed in front of anyone before. He encourages her and plays, quote, a film that no one else has seen. And the film he's referring to is French Smut. And once they become legal in the States, he plans to capitalize on the innate fascination that people have about who we as human beings really are. Now the same scene's really random, especially if you haven't seen X already. It's a callback to X and it shows like her original fascination with the concept of pornographic video that becomes more of a focal point in the 70s in the original movie. Pearl remarks to him that she doesn't really like reality because she can't just pack up and go and live her dreams because of the very real confines of her life on the farm and her family. If only they would just die. Pardon? Nothing. The thing that makes Pearl very terrifying, and honestly, this seems to be like a reoccurring theme with Mia Goth playing horror roles is that she tends to lend an almost naive, almost childish wonderment to or her um, horrible, horrible <laughs> female protagonist, antagonist. In this movie more so than Infinity Pool, disarming quality about her. So the fact that she's in so many like really f***ed up horror movies is really interesting. <laughs> in this movie, she has a very undifferentiated, incredibly simplistic way of thinking that leads her to do terrible, horrible things. So she's like a child having a temper tantrum of a lifetime. But with that said, she the reality is that she's a grown woman who's been killing animals her whole life as a method of survival, who has the ability to, to harm things and also is paired with a very, very large amount of bereaved entitlement. She comes back to the home to hear her mother sobbing. She presumably had thought that Pearl had run away and had left her to care for everything on the farm all by herself. But in the morning, Pearl has seemingly reached the realization that the only people holding her back from self-actualization are her parents. What else are we to do but kill your dad? She takes her father, again, who's completely paralyzed to the water in his wheelchair and uh, calls for her pet alligator to eat her dad. While she's doing it, she says, hey, it'll just be easier this way. It'd just be a lot easier if I went off and lived my life and didn't feel like I was abandoning you. So consider it, thank you. But before she can throw her father in, her mother catches her. What are you doing? I'm talking with daddy. And mama knows something's off with Pearl. It's pretty obvious that she can tell something's not quite clicking with Pearl. I mean, it is her mother. She's witnessed Pearl, Pearl's entire life. So she knows something ain't all right. But to see her just kind of like seemingly incredibly calmly walk up to the father in the wheelchair and just take him calmly back to the house, like, oh, she on that shit again. Stop with all this foolishness, go milk some cows. But mama tells her before going back to the house that life rarely turns out the way that you wanted. And that's something that she needs to learn to just be prepared for. Pearl ends up stealing one of the eggs from the alligator and brings it back to the barn where she ends up squishing it in her bare hands, thinking of it being Howard who blows up on his walk back to the house. That night at dinner, the mom tells her that she found a poster of the film that Pearl went to go see. She tells her to sleep outside in the bunkhouse to isolate herself, being that she didn't mind putting her entire family at risk of the flu. Again, if you recall, the father is paralyzed due to his fighting of the flu. So it's a very real uh, anxiety to have, like, come on. Pearl then tells her that she's going to go to the dance auditions at church. Pearl says that she wants to go to find out if she's good enough for the pictures or good enough for something more than this life on the farm. And her mom doesn't particularly take that well, uh, growing enraged at Pearl's ungratefulness. She asks what it is about this life on the farm that is so beneath her. Like, what is it about how we live that makes you feel like you're better than us, essentially? And Pearl is pleading with her like, if I don't get picked, then I'll come back to the farm and I'll never bring it up again. But I just need to try. I need to try to see if I am capable of this because if I don't, I'm gonna regret it for my entire life. This ends up snowballing into a bigger argument where mama brings up that she's noticed how dangerous 
Pearl is. And because of that, Mama in good conscience can't let her leave the farm. But as this argument continues, it does start to show that Pearl gets it honestly. Because <laughs> her, her mama ain't wrapped too tight either. She starts yelling at her, threatening her, telling her to take this knife and stab her since you want to do it so badly. Perhaps I should kill him for you. How the hell are I getting this? That way we can both go to the audition and be rid of our husbands who are gone. And I took this as a hint that perhaps where all of Mama's anger comes from is because because she too at one point wanted something bigger than the farm and she now resents Pearl for wanting the same. But she ends it by saying, if you want to go, go. But when you fail, because you will, remember what that feeling is like because that's how I felt every time I looked at you. Pearl can't really wrap her head around where all this animosity comes from. I just don't want him to block you is all. They tussle, leading to Mama getting her dress uh, skirts lit on fire and she ends up going into a blaze of glory. Pearl puts out the fire by throwing a boiling pot of corn uh, on her, leaving Mama only barely alive from her burn wounds. Then she brings her down into the basement, badly burned but still seemingly alive, and locks her down in the cellar with only her father as witness. She runs away, traveling back to the city, back to the projectionist, and falls into his arms for the night. She has a dream about herself as a woman in the pictures with her mother watching her while badly burned, but she awakes next to the projectionist and scrambles to get dressed to practice for her audition that day. He offers to drive her back to the farm. And along the way, they see a soldier walking back towards the farm and she's not sure if that was actually her husband, Howard. When they get there, her daddy is still seated in the same spot because why wouldn't he be? Um, and he's still at the dinner table, frightened. And then, <laughs> this is not funny. It's really, it's very strange. Uh, the projectionist is just there sees like a mess all over the place and her father just sitting there terrified. It's been so long that the the pig that her in-laws gave them that her mother didn't want to accept because it was charity has gone bad and there's maggots on it now. But Pearl just kind of like welcomes the projectionist in as if that's not the scene. She introduces him to her father. She's like, let's go to my room, we can make out. The projectionist gets even more uncomfortable when he starts to hear like banging in the basement or somewhere in the house. And she's like, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. And he's like, it could be your father. What is wrong with you? Pearl says that the sound is actually their dog that they had to put in the basement for causing the mess that was here while they were away. And then she's like, oh, do you wanna see the rest of the animals on the barn? She introduces each animal to him. Each of them were named after one of her favorite actresses or actors. And he asks what the dog's name is that's in the cellar. And she's like, oh, we all have a dog. He's like, I better be getting back. Um, this has been a great time. It's always a pleasure to see you, Pearl. I'm gonna head out. <laughs> and Pearl, Pearl's sensitive, okay? She has a lot of feelings. And um, again, we get more good old hearty Mia Goth screams. Calm. No! Why are you leaving me? If I didn't do anything wrong, I don't understand, that's how you like me! Finally, he's like, it's, you're scaring me. You're frightening me. I wish you the best of luck on your audition, but I'm gonna go. And again, she feels things very deeply. That won't do. That can't do. Can't have it. I'm not staying on this farm! Something's gonna keep me here! Not you! Not Howard! Not Mama! Nobody! At this point, she decides to go full on, I'm living my dream, bitch. So she visits Mama in the cellar, uh, throws her back down the stairs. Presumably that one did it. And she tells her like, the pain that you feel is the same pain I always felt every time you looked at me. She then visits daddy, cleans him up. <laughs> His face. She cleans daddy up, puts him in a suit, takes her mother's red dress for her audition. And uh, then she takes a pillowcase and suffocates him. But not until she thanks him for everything he's done. Cause you gotta be grateful. What can I say? I know you'll look down on me proudly. You are loved. Girl, you don't need to love me, crazy ass. She has some final chores to handle before leaving off to the audition, of course. Mainly throwing the projectionist and his car into the river to the alligator. Au revoir, poor Johnny. And once that's done, she's off 
to her new life of stardom, all hindrances now out of the way. Once she gets there, she waits alongside Mitzi. Pearl is super resolute saying that it has to be her. She has to win. A statement that kind of throws Mitzi off. She's like, well, that's a little, like we're both going. Like, aren't you supposed to do something kind of, you know, polite sportsmanship? Like, if it's not me, I hope it's you. And she's like, nah. It's, it has to be me. But Mitzi is super nervous about the audition, so much so that she asks Pearl to switch places with her. And now it's time for Pearl's audition. Everything she's done, all the people she's murdered uh, for this moment to possibly go on tour with a local church dancing troupe has all culminated to this and she's remarkably determined. And thus begins the most horridly fanciful audition that takes place, I would say probably 80 to 90% in her mind. She has like the most plastered on, unblinking smile. Oh, and in her mind, she thinks she's doing it. She's doing it for the boys. She's doing it for the boys that are out at war. She's like, I am giving allied cuts. Rockets, red glare, realness. Once the delusions subside, the judges. <laughs> Thank you. But it's gonna be a no. What was it that Paula Abdul used to say all the time in American Idol? You're so special. You have such a such a way about you. No. And Pearl, as you can imagine, is distraught. That that's the best that's the best dancing I've ever done. Yeah, but we're you know we're looking for something different, uh, younger, blonde, someone with X factor. Um, again sequel. But Pearl, as you can imagine, is gutted. <laughs> like, and she starts to lose her mind even more than she already has been. And she's imagining the judges to be her mother and her father, Howard and the projectionist, all there in her mind as she begs them, begs them to give her another chance. And boy, is this scene wholly uncomfortable. But again, she's Mia screaming, I'm a star! <laughs> Coming for your bag, Miss Goth. Coming for your bag. Okay. Once she's like out of the audition, she's in the back of the church, ugly crying, snot dribbling. And out comes Mitzi, who comes to comfort her and offers to take her back home. Once they get back, Mitzi notices again the pig that they never ate. And it's again, rotting even more with even more maggots on the front porch. And she begins to try to like cheer Pearl up. And she's like, what's really wrong? Because I'm sure it's not just this church play. Like it, it, I'm sure this can't be the main reason you're upset. Pearl says that she feels like something is really wrong with her. Like there's something missing in her that other people have. And Mitzi is like, have you told Howard about it? Have you told Howard how you feel? And she's like, I'm scared because I don't know what he'll think of me. And so Mitzi is like, well, tell me then. Pretend I'm Howard and, and say everything that you need to say. Thus commences perhaps one of the most epic single shot monologues that goes on for a straight seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes about everything. How mad she is that he, that Howard left her on the farm. So much so that she wishes he'd die. That's how I feel about it. It goes into how she cheated on him, how she just decided that perhaps she should just accept living on the farm with Howard because he is such a good person, but she resents him for having a good life, but choosing to keep her here on this farm when he had the option to live presumably a better life. She goes into how she lost their baby and how she was relieved when it died. Then it goes into how she killed the projectionist and her parents and how she regrets killing daddy specifically because he didn't deserve that. Though she resents mama, she understands where she's coming from. She only wanted the best for me. And by the end of this long winding, again, monologue, she's talking by herself. She reaches the conclusion that maybe if she can turn this farm into a home, like Howard always wanted, Howard will stay with her. Like she wants to be with Howard and she wants to, 
to see him when he comes back and maybe maybe it is okay for her to stay on the farm if it's with Howard. I'm really whittling down this monologue because it's long. Again, seven minutes straight is crazy. And <laughs> this is not funny. But it, yes, it is. It is funny. Because at the end of it, because again, Mitzi maybe got two words in the entire time. She's just like, I should probably get going now. Before Mitzi leaves, Pearl asks if she is frightened of her. And Mitzi says, no, no. Then Pearl thanks her and says that she's happy for her, for getting the part. Mitzi tries to be modest and begins to lie and say she didn't get the part. And and Pearl's just with that little bit of, little bit of, ooh, 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 she's like, don't lie to me. So Mitzi just thanks her and says, it'll be swell to, you know, dance around the state. I hope you can come to the show. Hope you can come see the show sometime. You know, let's get everything you want. Oh no, bitch, run, run, run. Run! Run, bitch! Run! 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 Make them get Neil's head pave me! Neil is to say this is a horror movie, so she gon' trip on nothing. And uh, Pearl's there with her ex to finish the job. I will say this shot is so like classically terrifying to me. I don't know. Like I've seen a lot of like gore in movies and a lot of like psychological thrillers, but there's something about this shot that I actually think is so, I like it. I like it, I don't know. Please, I'll do anything you want. It's not about what I want anymore, Mitzi. It's about making the best of what I have. With that done, it's time for Pearl to just make the best of what she has. So she gets her mama from the basement. Seemingly was still slightly alive when she threw her downstairs, but she ended up dying trying to crawl up the stairs and wraps her mama's dead arms around her, imagining her singing German nursery rhymes as the film shows how she dismembered Mitzi's body and fed it to the alligator. Uh, she also starts to prepare the dinner table with her parents' dead bodies and that maggot infested suckling pig until Howard comes through the door, finally home from war. And the film ends with a beautifully instant classic shot of Pearl welcoming him home. Howard, I'm so happy you're home with another terrifying smile that slowly cracks at the seams and turns into tears. Like she has tears running and you can just see her go completely deranged as she holds that shot as the credits begin to roll. And that baby is Pearl. I think this movie is an instant classic, I do. I don't know, I just really like this movie. It's one of those movies, like if we're talking about movies in the last year, it's one that I recommend people to watch, especially if they like horror. And yeah, I'm excited to see the third movie in the X franchise, Maxine. Uh, if I end up watching that and have any strong opinions one way or another, I'll be sure to make a video on it. But if you haven't watched Pearl yet, I think you should really do it. I think it's a fun time. Not fun, it's pretty depressing and disturbing, but it's certainly a good movie. <laughs> so that's all for today, folks. If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media. I feel like I need a gloss for this. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, if you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have other movies that you think I should check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.